the headlines of this hour on VTV News. Party General Secretary and State President honors exemplary figures for innovative initiatives and good service. Later on, preparations in full swing across Vietnam for the new school year. And in a world news, China and Africa eye elevated ties at FOCAC Summit. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good afternoon. It is currently 3 p.m. local time and you're turning into 30 minutes of VTV News. I'm Dylan Le with the latest updates. Now on Wednesday morning, marking the 79th anniversary of the August Revolution and National Day, General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm met with 150 individuals recognized for their contributions to the Good Initiative, Good Service Movement by the Vietnam Civil Servants Union. He lauded the movement for fostering innovation, creativity and discipline in public service. The General Secretary noted that despite modest incomes, many public servants work with great dedication and are respected by their peers and the public. He called for policy advice initiatives to address pressing public and business needs, emphasizing the need to harness internal resources, prioritize digital and green transformations, and advance the knowledge economy to achieve the goals of the 13th Party Congress. A month ago, the very first batch of emission-reducing rice was harvested in the Mekong Delta city of Cần Thơ. This was a pilot model for the Sustainable Development Project, which aims to cultivate 1 million hectares of high-quality and low-emission rice in line with green growth in the Mekong Delta. More in the following. For the first time, Nia took part in a pilot model aimed at reducing emissions in rice cultivation. He faced several changes. He had to apply new methods, including advanced seeding machines, innovative fertilizers, and alternating wet and dry water management techniques. I strictly implemented the four rights, which include only spraying pesticides when there is a high density of pests and diseases. I used to spray pesticides immediately after seeing a pest. Farmers used to worry about pests, diseases, and declining productivity. Now, their fields are full of grain awaiting harvest. This is a testament to their confidence in sustainable production methods. This autumn winter crop's yield is estimated at 6.6 .6 to 6.9 tons per hectare, with profits also on the rise. The price of a kilogram of rice is 0.35 USD, with a cost of 0.14 USD. Thus, farmers enjoy a full profit of more than 0.12 USD for a kilogram of rice. Positive results from pilot models in Mekong Delta provinces demonstrate the right direction for improving rice production efficiency and protecting the environment. Local authorities aim to reduce input costs by 30 percent, increase rice farmers' profit margins by 50 percent, and cut greenhouse gas emissions by 10 percent. Rice yields can range from 3 to 7 tons per hectare per season, and even higher if farmers use modern methods. In the near future, selling carbon credits from these rice fields will provide additional income for farmers in the Mekong Delta. This not only creates new financial value, but also serves as evidence of the shift towards greener, more sustainable farming practices, reflecting a positive change in farmers' mindsets and methods. The agricultural sector has been shifting its focus from production to market demand. Alongside reducing production costs, developing agritourism has emerged as a sustainable measure. In Hating province, agritourism has been implemented in many localities with significant results. Ecotourism area in Phu Lâm village, Hating province. Here, tourists can immerse themselves in the peaceful countryside and clean fresh air. The village has been endowed by nature with magnificent landscapes. Villagers are friendly and hospitable. These features have left lasting impressions on tourists from all over the world who come here to visit and experience the area. We have been to many places, but when we come here, 
we have a strange feeling. Friendly people, magnificent landscape, lovely weather. Next time, I will definitely come back here with my friends. In the province, visitors can also explore the Phuc Chek Pomelo Gardens. Here, they can participate in the pomelo production process, from caring for the trees to harvesting and testing fresh fruits straight from the garden. This tourism model excites both adults and children, as it offers many interesting experiences throughout the tour. Local people would love to welcome tourists here so they can experience the area. We hope they can help us promote our products. The province Center for Enterprise Development, Support and Investment Promotion has also partnered with travel agencies to develop community tourism programs as well as agricultural tourism and ecotourism tours. These aim to help farmers have more income while promoting their homeland and culture to domestic and international tourists. The province has many advantages for developing community tourism. In the future, tourism will become a key economic sector for the locality. The province aims to achieve several goals by 2025, including having at least one recognized rural tourism area, ensuring 50 percent of rural tourism service establishments provide accommodation and food, and developing at least one model of a specific agricultural and rural tourism chain in each rural district with tourism potential. Total import-export turnover from the beginning of the year to mid-August exceeding 473 billion U.S. dollars, up nearly 17 percent year-on-year. The trade surplus reached nearly 15.5 billion U.S. dollars. This indicates that goods exports continue to serve as the main driving force of Vietnam's economic growth throughout the year. The warehouse is fully stocked, while workers and machines are operating at full capacity. Despite the usual slowdown from April to August, the factory is operating non-stop to supply furniture for the year-end holiday season in the EU and the U.S. We export about 250 containers per month, roughly 20 percent more than in 2023. We anticipate exceeding the growth target set for the year. The wood industry is on track to reach its export target of 14.2 billion U.S. dollars. The textile and garment industry is also approaching its target of 44 billion U.S. dollars in export value. Besides this, other sectors have shown impressive growth. According to the World Bank, the strong performance of manufacturing and processing exports has significantly boosted Vietnam's GDP growth rate. What we see coming forward is that since there was a recovery, um, a very big rebound of exports, um, internationally, we expect trade growth to moderate a bit. As of mid-August, the country's total import value exceeded 220 billion U.S. dollars, marking an 18 percent increase. This rise is primarily due to imports of machinery, raw materials, and supplies needed for Vietnam's production and export industries. We need to import 20 percent more materials to meet this year's export target. We aim for a growth rate of about 15 percent, targeting 11 to 12 million U.S. dollars in 2024. The strong export performance early in the year is due to effective policies and free trade agreement incentives. With the international market improving, imports and exports are expected to drive economic growth in the final months of the year. Fruit and vegetable exports are forecast to reach a record high of 7 billion U.S. dollars this year, according to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Over the past eight months, export turnover for fruits and vegetables has already surpassed 4.6 billion U.S. dollars, marking an increase of over 30 percent compared to the same period last year. Notably, August saw a more than 60 percent increase in export turnover compared to the previous month. Additionally, the export of Vietnamese grapefruit to South Korea, along with frozen durian and fresh coconut to China, has created significant growth opportunities for the fruit and vegetable industry. During the recent four-day holiday, customs authorities at the Thanh Thuy International Border Gate in Hazang processed clearance for 200 vehicles transporting imports and export goods. 
This include 94 vehicles carrying exports such as bananas, durian and tapioca starch, and 106 vehicles with imported goods, primarily fresh fruits. To support businesses during the period, border gate authorities deployed officers and civil servants to handle procedures efficiently. According to the Hassan Customs Department, total import and export turnover for August surpassed 36 million U.S. dollars, marking a nearly 34.5 percent increase compared to the same period last year. Year-to-date figures are estimated to exceed 215 million U.S. dollars, achieving more than 58 percent of the annual target. And before we move on to the next part of the bulletin, let's have a look at the exchange rate between the Vietnam Dong and some world currencies in today's trading session. Coming up next on VTV News. Preparations in full swing across Vietnam for the new school year. And later on, Cuc Phuong National Park named as Asia's leading national park by the World Travel Awards. Now moving on to other important updates, Bingzong Province has announced a plan to complete 42,000 social housing units by the end of next year. According to the Bingzong Provincial People's Committee, the province will establish specialized units at all levels to oversee, appraise, manage and control projects related to the construction of social housing. Additionally, local targets have been set with Tuzo Mot City tasked with constructing over 13,000 units and Thuat An City responsible for more than 6,000 units. Moreover, Bing Zung will allocate at least 2% of the industrial park area for the development of dormitories and facilities to enhance workers' quality of life. Ia Hao Commune, located in Ia Hao district of Daklak province, once served as a shelter and support hub for officials and soldiers during the years of resistance against the U.S. For its significant contributions, the government recognized Ia Hao as a safe zone commune. In peacetime, the local authorities and residents have united to overcome challenges, steadily building a prosperous and beautiful new rural area. In addition to receiving preferential loans, local residents have been guided in shipping from short-term crops to growing coffee, macadamia, and durian. They've also been taught to implement scientific and technical advancements. This has significantly improved their economic conditions. We were able to earn close to 25,000 U.S. dollars from one homegrown hectare of rice and four hectares of coffee. My hamlet and family have been enjoying better living conditions, thanks to the developed transport infrastructure and schools. We've received support in the form of livestock and seeds to develop our own business. Ia Hiao Common is currently home to over 3,300 households, with ethnic groups comprising about 35% of the population. A decade ago, the commune's poverty rate was over 30%. Now many households have transitioned from barely making ends meet to enjoying comfortable and happy lives. Thanks to the policies of the party and state, combined with the efforts of the people, the commune achieved the new style rural title in 2019, and the poverty rate decreased to 5.3 percent. Daklak province has four commons recognized by the government as central safe zones during the resisting wars against France and the U.S. Among them, Ia Hia was the first to successfully complete the new rural development program. The goal of the local authorities and residents is to achieve advanced new rural standards by 2025. The 2024 to 2025 school year is fast approaching. Across the country, preparation efforts are in full swing, aligning with directives issued by Prime Minister Fat Ming-ching during a recent conference on the upcoming school year. 
The Prime Minister emphasized the importance of thorough preparations, including ensuring the readiness of schools, classrooms, equipment and textbooks, while maintaining hygiene, security and safety. Additionally, organizing a joyful and inspiring opening ceremony on September the 5th is a priority to set a positive tone for the new academic year. In recent days, local women have joined teachers at Nam Phong Kindergarten in creating learning materials for children. But their efforts don't stop there. Parents have assisted in cleaning the school grounds, planting vegetables, and tending to flower gardens. I want to help the teachers to the best of my ability. They are already tasked with taking care of the children. Many schools in the northern mountainous regions have been affected by recent heavy rains. In Bakwang District, Hazang Province, military forces are supporting schools in cleanup activities while teachers focus on decorating classrooms. We, teachers, have started cleaning classroom supplies and toys, as well as the restrooms and other facilities. In Daklak, the province with the highest student population in Central Highlands, nearly 500,000 students are receiving support in the form of textbooks. We've ensured an adequate supply of textbooks for students, especially those of ethnic groups. Schools across the country have undergone renovations, with many new facilities being built. Gunther City has allocated 4.6 million US dollars for these efforts. We've finished construction for two new schools, one primary and the other secondary. This year marks the full implementation of the new national education curriculum for grades 1 through 12. Localities have invested in educational equipment. Around 20 million U.S. dollars from the provincial budget has been allocated to educational facilities to fund their renovation, including classrooms, textbooks, and facilities. The thorough preparations of local authorities underscored their commitment to making education a top priority. The Ministry of Education and Training has called for a strengthened approach to psychological counseling in schools for the upcoming academic year. Educational institutions are required to establish processes for identifying and addressing risks that negatively impact students' mental health. This includes bolstering efforts to prevent and manage school violence and addressing situations that place students in vulnerable circumstances. For the 2024 to 2025 school year, the education sector aims to foster a positive school culture, enhancing both the reputation and brand of schools while promoting a humane and supportive social environment with friendly relationships. Vietnamese authorities have recently uncovered hundreds of illegal ivory trading cases, seizing tons of ivory. The most recent case involved a 1.6-ton ivory shipment detected at Haiphong Port. These cases highlight the ongoing prevalence of wildlife product violations. In response, many areas, including Daklak Province, are actively working to reduce demand for wildlife products through initiatives such as green tourism and elephant-friendly tourism. In December last year, nearly 10 tons of wildlife products, including ivory, evidence of violations against endangered and rare animal protection regulations, were destroyed in Da Nang. This marked the second largest ivory destruction event ever. However, experts believe that significant challenges remain, as the demand for ivory has not yet decreased. Out of the 90 stalls we survey in Da Nang City, more than 10 still trade and display ivory crafted products publicly. Controlling and preventing domestic trade is crucial to reducing the demand for ivory. Daglak Province, which is known for its rich biodiversity in national parks and nature reserves, has many animal species protected by the law, including the Asian elephant. Strict control is essential. Bulma Thua City will intensify the control and inspection of wildlife products while also raising public awareness to protect wild animals in endangered situations. Yokdo National Park introduced an elephant watching experience in 2018 to curb the trade of wildlife products. This initiative has since attracted considerable attention from international tourists. They just look happy 
and also you can see that um, you're caring for them. I feel, uh, it's wonderful to see them doing what they normally do. I know we've got people around, but they're still left to roam around and, and just do behave as they would normally behave. Over the past 30 years, the number of elephants in Vietnam has rapidly declined. There are now only about 150 species left in eight provinces. Dala province is home to the largest wild elephant population in the country. The herd lives mainly in Jokdon National Park. The province has launched the initiative Won Ma Thuot Says No to Wildlife Products as part of its strong commitment to protect wild species. On Tuesday night in Manila, Vietnam's Cuc Phuong National Park was honored as Asia's leading national park in 2024 at the prestigious World Travel Awards. This marks the sixth consecutive year that Cuc Phuong has received this esteemed accolade. The organizing committee praised Vietnam for its effective management of resources, supported by both the government and international organizations, and its commitment to forest protection and biodiversity conservation. The park has successfully leveraged these efforts to enhance scientific research, forest environmental education and ecotourism services. This award provides a significant opportunity to further showcase Vietnam's stunning natural beauty on the global ecotourism map. Coming up next in our world news. China and Africa eye elevated ties at the FOCAC summit. Later on, the UN sounds alarm over the surge in MPOC cases in Africa. Now moving on to our world news, the 2024 summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, or FOCAC, kicks off on Wednesday with the theme, joining hands to advance modernization and build a high-level China-Africa community with a shared future. At press briefings and ministerial conferences, China emphasized that it would sign new agreements jointly to advance the Belt and Road Initiative with African countries. At this summit, China and Africa will redefine bilateral relations and outline a series of key measures to jointly promote modernization. Ahead of the summit, Chinese leaders met with presidents from over 10 African countries, announcing enhanced diplomatic ties. Notably, relations with South Africa were elevated to a comprehensive strategic partnership for the new era. The relationship between China and Africa remains strong, with China making substantial investments in infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative and maintaining its role as Africa's leading foreign direct investment partner. The United Nations has issued a grave warning regarding the spread of monkeypox or MPOX in Africa. As of September the 2nd, about 367 cases of MPOX, including three deaths, have been confirmed in five countries in East and Southern Africa. The countries reporting cases of monkeypox include Burundi, South Africa, Uganda, Rwanda and Kenya. According to the UN, more than 3,800 confirmed cases have been recorded across Africa since January. Burundi became the second most affected country in the continent after the Democratic Republic of Congo, the outbreak's epicenter. In response, the African Union approved 10.4 million US dollars to support the ongoing efforts to combat the MPOX outbreak across the continent. At least six Ukrainian officials, including cabinet ministers, submitted their resignation on Tuesday. They included the Minister for Strategic Industries, Minister for Justice, Minister of Environmental Protection and Minister for Reintegration. The two deputy prime minister also resigned. Ukrainian President Zelensky has ordered several reshuffles since the conflict began. He also replaced Ukraine's defense minister last September after a series of corruption scandals. More recently, in June, the commander of the Joint Forces of Ukraine's Armed Forces was also replaced. In Japan, more than 500,000 tons of shells are discarded annually. Without proper treatment, these shells could become an environmental hazard. To address this issue, a factory in Osaka has developed helmets made from shells and recycled plastics. 
This innovative approach aims to tackle the environmental problem of discarded shells. The helmets called Shellmet, using shells as the primary material, have debuted successfully. The process involves grinding the shells into a fine powder, which is then mixed with recycled plastics to form pellets. These pellets are melted and molded into helmets. Compared to traditional helmets made entirely of plastic, Shellmet helmets can reduce carbon emissions by up to 36 percent. We received order requests a year ago, but didn't begin delivery until much later. We've spent enough time on research and production of this materials. When compared to eco-friendly plastics derived from limestone, Shelltech material used in Shellmet helmets saves up to 20% more energy and can be recycled further once its lifespan ends. This material is expected to see broader applications and potentially replace current plastics. We have received domestic and international orders for our products. Recently, a French construction company has reached out to us and negotiated the terms of our deal. Shellmet helmets are available in two types, one for bicycles and one for industrial and disaster protection. Due to their environmental benefits, Shellmet helmets have been selected as a showcase product for next year's World Expo in Osaka, Japan, with an estimated 3,000 helmets to be featured at the event. Up next, let's have a look at the weather forecast for Vietnam and other locations in the world. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our website or YouTube channel or download a mobile app VTV Go for more. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.